Welcome to uh, John Ray's Backwards Guns. Uh, tonight we're going to do a video on 308. I'm going to load some 308 for an AR-10. I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. I'm going to use full metal jacket bolts and size it so to run an AR-10. Perfect. Stick around guys, it should be interesting. Guys, um, this week I'm going to use Varget powder. I'm going to use CCI number 200s, large rifle primers. I'm going to use these Hornady 30 caliber uh, uh, 50 grain full metal jacket boat tails. And I'm going to use these uh, new three-way cutter from uh, RCBS. I'm going to show you how I incorporate that in my uh, my loading process. Now I'm, I'm going to use small base RCBS dies and a competition cedar die. Uh, to seat my bullets from RCBS, uh, but well, I've used those before, so you guys know how that works. Anyway, let's go over here. Since I'm using Hornady bullets, using um, Hornady bullets, um, I'm going to take my load data out of the Hornady book. Uh, case trim length is 2.005. Okay, I'm going to trim. As long as it's below 2.015, you're all right. I'm going to shoot for the uh, 005. Here's my 150 grain bullets, uh, full metal jacket boat tails. So my case overall length is going to be 2.700. Slide down here to the Varget. If you slide over, starting load 35.9, all the way over to 44.9. Well, I load these all the time, and I always load right in the middle of that, 43. That way, if I'm a little over, a little under, I'm not hurting anything. So I'm going to load 43 since these are going in an AR-10 um, semi-automatic weapon. Lord God, I didn't say automatic. I said semi-automatic. Anyway, that's how I'm going to load them tonight, guys. Um, stick around, and I'll show you uh, how uh, I uh, start my process. I'm also going to show you how I clean my brass. I have never showed anybody really got in depth this might be one of my last videos i don't know what the hell's going on with youtube have no clue i don't know if they're going to keep us throw us off i'm looking for an alternative site i have no clue what's going to go on but um i'll uh, try to include this that way you can at least see how i clean my brass so let's let's get started guys all right uh, my first step i put in a small base sizing die from rcbs all right guys I uh, made sure my uh, decapping pin is at the right length. I made sure, uh, I made damn sure, since I'm using an RCBS sizing die, I made damn sure I've got an RCBS shell holder. All right, guys, this is really important. These shell holders are designed to work with these uh, sizing dies. And this is a small base sizing die since I'm running it through an AR-10. You don't always have to use small base size and dies. I like to because a lot of times I load ammo and I don't know what rifles people's going to shoot the uh, ammo that I build for. So I go with a small base size and die. But anyway, I uh, ran it in till it touched my uh, shell holder. And then I spun it down one turn and I set it. Now guys, if this... Uh, just put a little bit of this lube on. Now, if this starts buckling right around your shoulder, you know you need to back this off like a quarter turn, a half a turn. Um, uh, you know, you're just pushing that shoulder too hard. But if it doesn't, then we're okay. Run it up, run it down. My shoulder's not buckled. But I, I, I'm going to spin that and run it twice. So that's a good size. Now if you want, on your first one or two, uh, get your uh, chamber checker and drop it down and make sure it's, uh, it's fitting. It's, um, you're, you're backing that shoulder off good enough. All right? And we are. I'm just going to do two and go on to the next step um, just to try to keep my video from being an hour long. So of course, Spin it. Check it. Perfect. 
If you hear that rumble, that's my uh, air compressor in the back. All right, last one on camera. There we go. There's three. Now I'm gonna uh, finish these off camera and take these back and put them in my wet tumbler and I'll show you how to do that. Um, give me a second and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, uh, I'll take my steel pins, drop them in my uh, wet tumbler and uh, reservoir, uh, take my brass, drop it in, get, your hot, get some hot water, as hot as you can stand it. I've had it running for a few minutes. Um, I take a little Dawn. That gets the uh, sizing. Uh, that gets that lube. The Dawn cuts that lube off that brass. Okay, guys? I fill this up. I'm about halfway with water. I've got that completely full brass, that completely full steel pins and water. That should be enough. Okay, guys, I take a little bit of this lemon shine. Okay, just just a tiny bit. All right. You don't want to use too many chemicals like degreaser, big green, big green degreaser, um, any of those real highly strong. That shit right there, simple green, big green. Um, that stuff will uh, the chemicals in it. Most brass is like 70% brass, 30% uh, uh, zinc, okay? So uh, strong chemicals like that, if you leave it set for 6, 8, 10 hours, it'll turn your brass green, okay? And it'll break down your brass, weakening it, and you won't get uh, longevity out of your brass. So if you use that, use it for like 15, 20 minutes. Dump it, pour uh, more water in it, and uh, use a different uh, cleaner. Sometimes I use Tide. Okay, Tide Pods. I don't eat these, neither do my kids, but I use these uh, to break down the uh, dirt and filth on this stuff. So uh, I just seal it up and uh, run it on my wet tumbler for about two hours. All right, let's go to my wet tumbler. I just set it on my, uh, I've got one of these. Uh, uh, Frankfurt Arsenal uh, wet tumblers. I, uh, of course, I just set this down on it. Set this on an hour, two hours, or three hours, four hours, whichever one you want. I think it goes to it goes to three hours. I usually do it for an hour, hour and a half. That's about it. Uh, you got to watch. This will leak sometimes, and these uh, this will get a little wet, and it'll just spin. But that's why I always dry it off real good. You can get some uh, skateboard tape, some traction tape, but on this and this, I've seen guys do that. It works great. But yeah, if you just keep it dry, it'll work. Now just spin that on an hour, and it should work. And uh, we'll come back in an hour and get this off. Hey guys, it's been an hour. There we go. Pick this up. I'll bring it over to my sink. Of course, I'd bring it over to my sink. And I just uh, drain the water out. Now, sometimes if the brass is really dirty, I'll drain this water out. I'll put another batch of water in, run it for 10 or 15 more minutes, and then drain it again. I'll drain it two, three times until the water's clear. Um, and uh, then uh, I'm ready to, uh, if I got a lot of time, I'll put my brass in a uh, dehydrator brass dryer. If I don't have enough time, I'll just blow it out with some uh, with my air compressor. But uh, I'll meet you out to. Uh, I'll show you how to get my steel pins out uh, next. I got my tumbler. I drained the water out of it. Now I just spread it out on this table. Shake it out. Try to get everything out. If you look, that is just beautiful. All right, guys. The, these steel pins, a lot of guys don't use the steel pins. They get lazy and they just use the uh, chemicals. But uh, you got to use these steel pins. They get down in your primer pockets. They uh, just get this brass so it looks brand freaking new. I don't know what to tell you. But I spread it out. Now I'll take this magnet and go to town. Drop it back in here. 
It takes about 10 minutes, uh, five minutes, according to how much you got to get all this out. And uh, then I'll uh, go trim my brass and uh, uh, uniform my primer pockets and, of course, you know, finish the loading process. So I'll meet you out at uh, my uh, trimming station. Hey guys, I, I almost forgot to show you this. you got to shake this brass out, okay? Them steel pins will get up in it. So just shake it out, because if not, you're going to have a mess. And then before you know it, you're going to be buying a bunch of steel pins. I've had these steel pins for I don't know how long. You just got to sort them. All right, guys. Um, I'll meet you at the trimming station. All that brass that I got out of the tumbler, the wet tumbler, in this bag. I'm going to grab three out of here. Um, first thing I'm going to do, guys, whenever you use a wet tumbler, here's the problem with wet tumblers. If you don't get them extremely, extremely, extremely dry, I mean, it's got to be Sahara Desert dry, okay? You'll get, and if it keeps any water at all in your brass, it's going to settle right above your primer pocket, all right? And then what happens, when you stick a primer in there, that water is going to set right on top of that primer, and then you stick the powder down there, it's going to dampen the powder right here at the bottom. And, of course, it's going to ruin your primer, and it's going to uh, get that powder wet right there. You're not going to ignite. You're not going to detonate your charge. So, um, holy hell, I said ignite, detonate. Uh, they might throw me off YouTube. Uh, those are the, uh, some of the key words. Explosion, ignite, detonate are some of the key words. They're... Uh, algorithm software picks up and either flags or throttles back your videos just uh, if anyone didn't know this anyway I take a uh, air compressor and I blow out the primer pocket and the uh, cartridge to the brass the empty brass real good okay guys one that makes sure all your steel pins are out and it makes sure your moisture's out the water's out I like to set these in a uh, brass dryer or a uh, dehydrator for like a half an hour. Uh, but if you don't have that kind of time, then just make sure you blow them out, okay? Especially if you use the steel pins. You want to get those steel pins. But if you guys notice, these are so clean. I mean, this looks like better than new, better than new brass, all right? This is the betterest, all right? Uh, the most betterest, all right, the mostest betterest, uh, bestest in the whole worldest. Anyway, it's clean inside and out. The primer pockets are extremely clean. I mean, this shit just rocks. So the wet tumbler is the way to go if you got an extra 200 bucks and you got an extra little bit of time to add to the loading process, all right? I know I am taking this to the absolutely uh, limits of being obsessed, all right? But People ask, I'm telling them, this is how you do it if you want it right. Of course, if you just knock a primer out and that flash hole uh, has uh, no debris in it and it's clear, you put dry powder in it, it's going to ignite, okay? But this is just better, better, like I said. But let's go to the, uh, let's go to the trimming, all right? Okay, now, these are about a year old, six, eight, ten months, I don't know how old, but they came out in the last year, 2017, 2000, uh, the end of 2016, the middle of 2017, I don't know. I ran across these on a uh, product magazine, RCBS, RCBS sent me, and so I thought, hell, it's a neat little trick. Uh, it actually um, deburs, chafes, and trims all with one tool. These cost about 50 bucks, and I know what you're saying, holy hell, 50 bucks? Yep, but you just need one of these. You can change these heads. This head says 30 on it. That's the 30 caliber pilot. You can get them for 6.5. You can get them for uh, uh, 6 millimeter, 223, um, uh, 270. You know, uh, you can get them for any caliber they, they make them for. And you just have to take Allen holes and uh, adjust this. It's real simple. The instructions are easy to follow. And luckily enough, it fit right into the uh, arbor of my uh, RSPS tr uh, brass trimmer. This is my catch-all. I'm going to move it just so we can see what's going on. All you do is uh, thread it in. 
All right, now, of course, I took my handle off because I didn't want to sit here, do this shit all day long. So I took a, a nut, put on the end of it, and uh, I'm going to use my uh, drill, my little screwdriver drill. I think it says uh, cordless screwdriver, but uh, some people say it's a drill. Some people call it a screwdriver. Doesn't matter. All right. The uh, trim length. Here are my scales. Make sure they're on the inch. I'm supposed to be, I'm trying to shoot for 2.005, okay? This is under 2.015, so it should, it should be all right right now. But uh, we're going to trim it anyway, show you how this trimmer head works. I uh, set this head up already, um, so uh, I, set, I, checked the, I set the depth, all right? I took a new piece of brass and set the depth. Here we go. Right, guys, on second thought, let me show you how I set this up, all right? Um, we've all seen uh, these lock and load modified cases that you use your stony point gauge and find uh, where your uh, lands and grooves are on a bolt action rifle and you can uh, stretch your uh, seating depth and uh, stretch your case overall length, try to make it more accurate. I use these to set these uh, Hornady uh, uh, case gauge up or a trim gauge up. All you want to do, loosen that up, all right, you see how easy that is. First of all, measure it, all right, that's the one with the threads in the bottom, all right. They cost about $5.99. You measure that. Remember our trim length? It said trim length is uh, 2.005. That's 2.004. That's damn close enough. All right, guys. Lock this in. Okay, now that's locked. You want to take that straight as far as you can. Push it forward. Take all the slack out of these. Tighten them back to that bolt. Run it through. Now that right there is 2.004. All right. That's not going to cut anything. Now this, the depth on this is set. All right. I just take this, put it back in my case. If you notice, I've got about 20 on the wall over there. All right. Now back to this. Slide that in. If you don't lock this in first, this is going to be at an angle. So push this in. Now uh, tighten your head stamp. Of course, you guys know these have to be Hornady shell holders. All right, you can't use any other shell holder with this uh, uh, trimming gauge. All right, this little trimming lay from Hornady. Uh, the hole that comes up and pushes the bottom of the, your brass, uh, RSBS and Lee's not big enough. So. Anyway, I got my little drill driver here. I'm going to uh, uh, trim this. This is going to chafe and deburr all at the same time. Probably one of the neatest inventions uh, that uh, I've seen in three or four years on the uh, on trimming brass and then reloading. So let's get started. <laughs> When it gets to the right depth, you'll feel it spin free. Okay, guys? All right. Loosened the wrong one, but it didn't move it. Now, guys, if you look at that real close, you can see that is chafed, deburred, and trimmed. You can see down inside it. Measure these in just a second. Lock my head in, tighten it. You see it's chafed, deburred, and trimmed. Let's do the last one. And then I'll measure. Make sure it's locked in. Then tighten your head stamp, your head case, your brass into your shell holder. Safe, D bird. I'm just going to do three on camera. Bend that around a little bit. All 
that's 2.07. That's 2.10. Um, I could probably trim those just a little bit more. I probably should have pushed it a little bit harder. Let's uh, crack this one on camera. A lot of times, uh, you know, a hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths. We've done, we've went through this before. It's uh, just a uh, thickness of a piece of paper. But let's get it right, just for camera's sake. That's down to 208 now. I guess I'm just uh, getting weak in my old age. All right. There it goes. You know, they say put a tiny bit of oil on this uh, arbor. Um, Sometimes I like to put oil on my cutting blades if I'm cutting like five, six, seven hundred thousands off a piece of brass. But if I'm only cutting one or two hundred thousandths, okay guys, I don't put oil on there because I don't want it to be over the brass and all messy and get down in the brass and then you've got oil and powder and a primer that the, the oil might get down in the primer and contaminate it. So if you can keep from putting oil and, and getting these clean, uh, fine. A lot of people trim first, and then they put them in the wet tumbler. Um, I've done that before, and it seems like it dulls up your chafe and deburr. So I like to chafe and deburr, and since this trims chafe and deburrs, I do it after I clean my brass. I anyway, it's probably going to work. Just in my mind, it seems like it works better. Try to get that last 200s off there. You know, you can turn that off. All right, guys, that's 2.006, all right? Uh, damn, that's close enough for me, all right? Uh, I can sit here and try to trim it again, but it's 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 fruitless, okay, guys? It just has to be below 2.015. So you're 900,000 under, so you're good. All right, guys, let's go on to uh, priming, powder and charging, and, you know, seating the bullets and all, all that stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to prime this brass like I always do, prime on my press. I dropped a large rifle primer in there. Again, drop a large rifle primer in there. And there's the third one. That's the one we're looking for. The last one. All right, guys, let's uh, charge this brass up with powder. Guys, like I always say, level your scale, it's level. Um, zero your scale with your uh, tin that you're going to use. Zero. Give it a second to stabilize. One more time. Give it a second to stabilize. All right, see how it says minus 2187? Notice I wrote minus 2187. And my uh, target weight is 43 grain, okay? That way when I pick my tin up uh, then I, and I go to set back down, I can tell if my scale drift. Lyman came out with a new set of scales the last year, year and a half. They, they're called this drift-free technology. I'd like to get a set and find out. If somebody's got a set, leave me a uh, comment and tell me if they're any good or not because these Hornady scales always drift. It seems like the powder thrower always throws really close to the right amount of powder, but the damn scales drift. That's why I use a set, second set of scales to confirm. But let's get back to this. All right. Um, I'm shooting for 43 grain. Punch in 43, zero. Uh, enter. Dispense. Let's see if we get a green light on our first throw.
There we go, 43. All right, now, let's, uh, these scales level. Let's confirm on these scales. Of course, 43.2. If you notice, I wrote minus 287 there, and I wrote 43 here. 43.1. All right, guys, that's a tenth off. I'm going to call that a good charge because I'm loading for a semi-automatic AR-10 to do range drills with 100 yards or less at the range. So I'm not trying to get alpha-sized groups at 600, 700, 800 yards. Okay, I'm just doing transitions with these. Pick your AR up, hit two steel targets at 100 yards, drop your AR, transition to your pistol, hit two different targets. So kind of like three gun competition. Um, I'm not trying to sit on a bench, bench this gun up, and shoot six, seven, eight, nine hundred yards. So if my powder is a tenth off one way or another, I'm okay. But I'm gonna confirm it's a tenth off, and that's as far as I want it to be. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, charge my brass. And Charge another load. If you notice, my scales on normal. A lot of people say they have to run these scales on uh, slow. Let's see if we get a good charge on this uh, third charge or second charge. Be nice if we get three in a row. I think we're going to do it. Got a green light, 43.0. All right, guys, if you look, you notice, I think I mentioned this before, I took a 243 bullet and I cut the head stamp off. I put a straw in the end of my uh, tube coming out of, for my powder, and then I notched little, I took a Dremel and notched a little tiny uh, ridges in the end of that bullet so it would uh, maybe drop one kernel at a time instead of two or three. So it seems to work for me. I run it on normal. Our next uh, load, we'll switch it to fast, and we'll see if we can get a good load that way. Now, of course, I'm going to come over here and confirm. Of course, it's going to say 43.2. Glad it's stable up. 43.2. All right, I might just, for the hell of it, knock uh, one or two kernels out. See if we can get it to 43 or 43.1. Of course, I didn't knock enough kernels out. Well, hell's bells. All right. It's always easier to trickle up than it is to uh, uh, scoop it out. That says 43.1. That last load was 43.1. I'm going to go with that. Well, see, the hell with that. Sometimes... Getting the exact powder charge drives you nuts. Or falling into that uh, uh, kill box that you built. 43, 43.1, I'm going to say acceptable. So uh, charge this up. That's our second one. Now I put my scale on fast. I'm going to let it zero and let's see if we throw a good charge. Come on, Batman. Looking for 43. Oh, it looks good so far. Damn, that's a green light, and that's on fast, guys. You uh, fix your straw. The straw's what does it. This uh, 243 that I cut, that helps a little bit. I've thrown 50, 60, 70 green lights in a row with this. Okay, guys? Um, but that's just how I do it. Um, you play with it. That's that Varget stick powder, which, if you ask anybody, isn't the uh, meter friendliest in the world. Of course, it's saying 43.1, and I'm going to go with that. Uh, so, anyway, we'll charge this up, and we'll go to uh, seating our bullets. All right, we're using these 30 caliber, caliber 150 grain full metal jackets. All right, 
I've uh, showed you all how I set my comp RCBS competition seat and dial up 100 times. Uh, but I put the 30 caliber uh, seat and plug in it, and I put the 30 caliber uh, bullet guide in it, and I had to use this step shell holder. Okay? So just place your bullet in, I mean your brass in, grab your bullet, run your uh, brass up till you engage your bullet guide, drop your bullet in. There we go. Now we're looking for 2.700. 2.699. Guys, that's close enough, all right? 2.699. If you notice, these bullets have the uh, cantilever line on it. And if you notice where I've got that seated, right almost to the top of the cantilever, uh, you can see, uh, you can barely see a little bit of it sticking out. That's uh, that's why you got when you have that uh, cantilever on these bullets. It's always nice to use a Lee factory crimp and uh, crimp these. That uh, that's perfect, guys. That's absolutely perfect. That may be the uh, most perfect bullet I've ever built in my life. Not really, but. Sounds good anyway. All right. I engage my bullet guide, drop my bullet in. Cramp. We'll check that in just a second. Last one on camera. Drop it in. Seat it, crimp it, two six nine six. All right, let's check this one. Two six nine eight, guys. That's close enough. You guys know every one of these little hashes will move it one down or one up, but. You also know if these bullets, the ojive, isn't uh, machined just perfect, your seat and depth is going to move up and down, all right? And that's what's going on. Uh, but for just shooting at the range, 100, 150, 200 yards, combat drill, silhouette drill, steel drills, whatever you want to call them, these are perfect. All right, guys, let's, uh, we'll check these in my chamber checker and we'll conclude this video. All right, guys, um, I wanted to show you something real fast. This is a RCBS bullet, bullet puller, okay guys? And I uh, always keep this laying on my bench, so if I, when I'm seating, when I'm crimping, if I crush a shoulder or something, uh, then I can pull the bullet real fast. Put one of these uh, 30 caliber collets in it. I'll just show you how I use it. I saw it laying here and I thought, hey, it won't take but a 30 seconds to show you. And just run it down. I grabbed an old 30 out 6 that I'd made since all the uh, ammo I made today came out good. I run that down. All right. What I'm going to do is run this up past the ojive on the bullet, tighten that up, and all I'll do is back. The, uh, the ram out and it should pull the bullet. Alright, I try not to tighten it too tight because I don't want to mark up my bullets. Uh, but if you notice, there you go. So that's one of those real long uh, nozzler bullets, but I just wanted to use it to show you uh, the effect. Uh, it did mark it up a little bit. But that's how I pull my bullets if I screw up. You notice it was that far in there. All right, guys. I think that's where it was. Um, I just wanted to show you how these RCBS bullet pullers work. I know the Hornady, uh, they've got the ratchet system. I've got one up there. It sucks. All right. It just, it drives you crazy. These, um, I can pull 30, 40 bullets in three, four minutes if I screw up and load the wrong powder charge or use the wrong powder. Of course, I would never do anything like that. 
anyway, I just wanted to show it to you guys. I always leave it laying up here on the bench just in case I screw something up, which happens all the time. So, okay, guys, let's get to the end of this video. All right, guys, last step is uh, to chamber check this, make sure it's going to charge up. I use small base 308 die here because I'm going to shoot it in AR-10. Um, I know what AR-10 it is, but I've never uh, built the ammo for that, so the small base die is the way to go. So all you do is drop it in your chamber checker, drop it in the right hole. And uh, I'll just sit here and chamber check all these. They're all going to go. So now let's get to the elephant in the room, guys. I don't know if this is my last uh, YouTube video or not. Uh, I'm going to try to build a couple more YouTube videos this month. I think uh, YouTube gave us a uh, be done by May 1st or uh, they're going to start deleting our channels. They want me to delete um, videos that doesn't comply to their newest policy. I don't know if they're going to hold us, the uh, reload community, to what their standards. They're talking about building, manufacturing ammo. I would assume they are. Uh, so I would assume after May 1st, my channel will get deleted. I'm going to try to keep it from getting deleted. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have been watching other people on YouTube. Um, Fortune Cookie 45, uh, Johnny's Reload Bench, um, Elvis Ammo, um, Military Arms Channel, Hickok 45, um, Iraqi Veteran 88. Okay, of course my... YouTube channel is nowhere near those guys. My YouTube channel was designed for my 100, 150 customers that come in here and reload for them to be able to index uh, issues that they have at their house. Uh, so uh, if they had a question, they could call me. I said, you look on this video, look on that video, how I do it. Okay, my uh, YouTube channel was never designed for, uh, you know, to get a million views on a video. I don't promote my YouTube channel. I don't pay any money for it. I don't sponsor it, promote it, boost it, whatever the hell you call it. I just throw my videos on there and hopefully the people uh, find them, search them, and, uh, and look them up and learn something from them. You know, my videos are for education purposes only. They're not for any kind of terrorist uh, motives, agenda. I have no agenda uh, to teach people how to blow up, teach them how to blow shit up, all right? That's not what I'm doing here. I'm trying to teach people how to build ammo that will function in their, uh, their uh, firearm. With that being said, I... Uh, uh, the thing I hate the most is I've got a lot of good customers that call me, that comment, that send me messages, and this is how I get to them. I, got a, I met a guy from Austria, Martin. He uh, uh, loads 30 out 6. Of course, they've got crazy gun laws over there, and me and him speak about them all the time, and they're just nuts. Uh, Martin, good luck to you. I hope everything works out over there, and I hope you uh, can find me on YouTube. Guys, if you want to find me on Facebook, it's under Johnny Ray Rice Facebook. I'm standing there with a bunch of veterans. My profile picture, I've got a bunch of veterans in the background. I accepted a flag at one of my uh, veteran friends. He passed away, and they uh, uh, awarded me his flag. So you can see me holding a flag in my hands. And actually, if you look to the left of me, I believe it's the left of me, Woody Williams, Congressional Medal of Honor winner from West Virginia. He uh, flipped the coin at halftime this year, or at uh, kickoff for the Super Bowl. Uh, he's standing beside me. He's about five foot four. Hell of a man, 93, 94 years old. Anyway, um, KC from Canada, uh, he calls a lot. And I've got to know him pretty good. Seems like a real good guy. Uh, in fact, he called the other day, started asking me some questions. I put the phone on speaker because I can't hardly hear because I've shot too damn much. And I'm usually behind the uh, uh, bench here working. And I can set the phone down and, and keep feeling around and listen to people and answer their questions. Anyway, he called me. Somebody uh, started laughing, and they decided to film a little bit of it. So I'll put three or four minutes of our conversation on here. You'll get a kick out of it. Real good guy. Dad was a veteran, World War II. Uh, guys, stick around and listen to it. Anyway, guys, good luck. I hope this ain't my last video. I'll try to promote or try to publish a couple more, uh, post them, and hopefully I can do two or three more, and we'll, I'll find another site whether it's uh, Full 30 or whether it's Daily Motion or, hell, I don't know. Uh, hell, somebody said they's loading videos on YouPorn. I don't know about that, but we'll find something. Guys, good luck to you, and uh, catch me on my next video.
I gotta be real careful with my stuff. Um, it's, 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 it's beyond. My old man was a World War II veteran. And like I was telling your nephew, I really thought it was very touching there. That one video you made, he had those two veterans on there. Cause that's my old man. He was a, he was a World War II veteran. He trained guys how to drive tanks and shoot and everything else. But he passed away back in 99. But if he saw what was all happening, fuck, you'd be rolling around in his grave, man. Like he fought for the, he fought for this country. And it's like, Jesus Christ, it didn't, they're just whittling away our, our right, left, right. It's, it's a bell. It's a bell we can't unring, and these guys just don't realize what will happen when they give their guns up. They don't. They, they think all this crime will go away, and it won't, and then they won't get their guns back, and they'll just be, uh, yep. they'll be sheep, and uh, you can't tell them anything. They know everything. Yep. So. There's, there's, there's sheep in their head. There's wolves. There's wolves, Johnny. There's, there's no doubt about it. But uh, the other thing is what I was going to tell you is I, is I also, like, really enjoy, like, uh, your videos. Uh, I've learned, learned a lot. Uh, hats off to you. You have no idea what I give to sit and have a fucking drink with you and just bullshit with you. Uh, but I really enjoy, like, uh, when you do, like, the hunting, like, the 30-odd six. And uh, I, I, I laughed like hell, man, when you, were, you did the second video. And you also, you, you clearly had some fucking assholes out at the gun range. Oh, yeah. You're making that video and you're talking, and you had that press in your hand, and you're squeezing that fucking press. Fuck, man, you got some arms on you. You got to pump a lot of iron. But I can tell, you you just won, and you even said, you go, I was lucky I kept my, I didn't lose my shit and everything. And I was watching that video, and I was laughing like hell. When you're squeezing that fucking press, it's like, you know, you always do want to beat the shit out of some guys out there. So, uh, so anyways, but I really do truly enjoy, uh, like, your hunting videos, like how to make, like, hunting ammunition, um, you know, and, and how you do it. And then also when you're at the range and, uh, and, and showing, showing how the different groups, like, uh, when you up the powder, when you down the powder. And uh, that's what I tell guys, too, when I'm doing all my reloading. It's like... You know, if you up the powder, you down the powder, you know, it, it's going to make groups different. And sometimes your rifle, you know, it, it's not going to like like one. If, if you up the grain or, or lower the grain, your groups will be better. You know, you try to explain that to guys. And it's like, well, fuck, you know, just start watching fucking YouTube and everything else like what I'm doing. And, you know, you'll you'll educate yourself. So uh, I really, I really, truly enjoy your videos and how you, uh, how you show, how you take apart. Like those RCB uh, gauges, like, you know, you take those dies apart, you show a guy, like, you know, like you can use the one, the one competition die, like all you gotta do is change the guts in it, so I really, I really truly enjoy your videos, Johnny. Well, I appreciate it, brother. You ever in West Virginia, stop by, man. You're always welcome here. Yeah, like I said, like, I'm fucking coming down there one way or another, and I'll, and I'll make sure to make arrangements with you guys, because, uh... I, I'd really like to just sit and have a drink with you and, uh, you know, just, just bullshit with you. Maybe even go shoot some guns with you. you know? Sure. Like, you know, I, I, I truly, and, and like I said to your nephew, I really fucking like it. Like, when you're making your video, and I can see it. You got your fucking sidearm right on your holster. It's like, right on your side. It's like, yeah, fucking right, man. It's like, look at this guy making his video. And, you know, the other thing is, too, is like, uh, as I was telling your nephew, it's like, uh, like uh, that uh, Johnny's reloading bench and all that kind of stuff, you know, like, yeah, I really like his videos too, but, you know, you can just see his hands and shit, eh? It's like, I like your videos. You're like, fuck you, here I am. It's like, you know, here's my video. Here's the way I do it. Here's the way I load. I got my sidearm right on my fucking side. It's like, you know, I, I really do. You're, we're a breed from the same cat, man. Just yeah. fucking different letters. That's yeah. the best way to word it, okay?